Hey, welcome everybody to another OpenShift Commons briefing. Um, today we're again, once again, live streaming on Twitch and through Blue Jeans. And um, so uh, bear with us, ask questions in chat as if you get any technical issues. But we're, we're thrilled to have with us um, an OpenShift Commons member, uh, Kinfolk and Alvin Kriki, who has been with us before um, to talk a little bit about a new um, project that he's been working on and making um, life better for all of us Kubernetes. Um, and I love the title, Unleash Your Clusters EBPF Superpowers with Kubel. I, anyways, Gadget. I'm going to let him explain what they've been doing over at Kinfolk. And then um, at the end of this, we'll do some live Q&A um, and have a, a bit of a conversation about what's going on at Kinfolk these days, because there's lots of news over there. So Alvin, take it away. Tell us what your superpowers you're enabling with us today. Thank you. Uh, yes, I will talk about uh, EBPF superpowers uh, in Kubectl gadget or OC gadget as well in Inspector gadget. Uh, first, my name is uh, Alban. I'm at uh, co-founder and director of Kinfolk Labs at Kinfolk. Uh, that's a, a new uh, things we announced recently um, at Kinfolk. We do consulting or on open source project uh, like Linux and Kubernetes, and we. Um, recently announced uh, that we have a dedicated team uh, to, to consulting around Kubernetes. And Inspector Gadget is one of the projects uh, we work on there uh, that I will present now. Uh, first, uh, I will describe a bit the problem statement. Why do we do, uh, we work on Inspector Gadget? Uh, first, uh, debugging distributed application is hard when you have an application working on Kubernetes and something is not good, uh, it's kind of difficult to debug it. Uh, at the same time, we have uh, now a lot of BPF tracing tools on Linux, but uh, being available on Linux doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy to use on Kubernetes. And uh, so that's not trivial, and the goal of Inspector Gadget is to plug that gap to uh, make it easy to use BPF tracing tools to debug your applications on Kubernetes. Uh, so Inspector Gadget is not just one tool, but it's a collection of gadgets for developers of uh, Kubernetes applications. We now have a, a Kubernetes Slack channel on um, Inspector Gadget, and it's an open source project available on GitHub. So I will talk about a lot of Kubernetes and BPF here. Um, there are, as I mentioned, there are uh, many different EPPF Tracing tool on Linux that you can use on the command line. Uh, for example, BPF Trace, uh, BCC has a lot of uh, tools in general for tracing, but other for networking, and it's a good resource to uh, learn new things about BPF. Uh, I will talk uh, about uh, Trace Loop as well because that has been designed for uh, Inspector Gadget and others as well. Uh, to use that in Kubernetes, there are uh, tools like kubectl trace that use BPF trace, but at the Kubernetes level, on Inspector Gadget that tries to uh, pick different BCC, uh, sorry, BPF code and make it uh, available at the Kubernetes level with a um, specific use case that I will describe. So I um, mentioned it has a lot of gadgets. So there are different use cases. Uh, each gadget at different use cases, like trace loop, is for uh, seeing. Uh, when your pod crashed to inspect what has been wrong with it and uh, with the last system calls that it has done. There is a network policy advisor that uh, helps you to uh, see uh, what kind of network traffic is done by your pods and uh, help you to write network policies in a, a bit more automated way than just writing uh, YAML by yourself. Um, capabilities is another gadget that helps you to uh, see what capabilities are exercised by your pods, and then you can write uh, pod security policies in an um, easier way than try to guess what is happening. And then there are other things to inspect what your application are doing, what kind of files uh, are open uh, with open uh, what kind of uh, programs are executed with exec snoop, or what kind of sockets are bound on a PCP port, for example, with main snoop, and so on. So in my talk, I will have um, a few demos uh, of these different gadgets. 
Uh, if you want to try kubectl uh, gadget or inspector gadget by yourself, uh, it uh, should be easy to install on your um, laptop by installing downloading kubectl gadget and then uh, deploying uh, the gadget daemon set on your cluster. Uh, you can do that with uh, the OC gadget deploy command uh, because uh, inspector gadget is actually a kubectl or OC plugin and then apply it with this command. Um, if you want to reproduce the demo, I will actually just use the uh, OpenShift playground powered by Katakoda at this address. And you can uh, fetch the slides and read the steps step uh, notes uh, at this link. So let's start by the first demo. I will try to uh, install it uh, live here. So let me leave the slides and go to the uh, Katakoda command. Um, so here I have a terminal and uh, I will get my note just one second. The first thing I will do is fetch um, a gadget and um, I use a develop, developer version uh, that is not released yet because I added some last minute uh, fixes for to make it work on OpenShift. Um, the installation and here I make it available as a kubectl plugin or C plugin and to check if it works I can type kubectl gadget version or OC gadget version and I see that it works as a plugin for OC and I use a development version here. Uh, next, I will uh, deploy this in this uh, Kubernetes cluster uh, here on OpenShift. Um, I use uh, this command that deploys um, daemon set on a couple of airbag rules to make it work uh, uh, with uh, privilege. Uh, so now, if I look at the pods uh, deployed previously, I shall see. Um, what being created, and after a while, uh, I should be able to see, to confirm by looking at the logs that um, it's running. So here I run the logs command. Uh, I see the version, and it seems to start correctly. Um, so this command, if I run OC gadget, I see some um, the list of actual um, gadgets that is available in uh, Inspector Gadget. And that's it for the installation. I will go back to my slides. Um, uh, just wait a bit for me. Okay, so I will uh, present the first gadget uh, network policy advisor. Uh, the use case of that is uh, when uh, a developer joins a project and that already exists, it has already plenty of uh, microservices or ports and so on, but no network policies have been developed. And so it's kind of difficult for this developer to start writing network policy when they don't know the architecture of the project. Um, so that's kind of uh, what I call pod security as an afterthought because the security has not been designed from the beginning, but after the project exists, we think, oh, what about writing uh, network policies? I will take as an example this um, project. Uh, so that's a demo uh, microservice project. Um, and it has a lot of components that I don't know what they do, so it's a bit difficult for me to write network policies when I don't know what the participant uh, part is used and so on. Um, let me go to demo that. I'm going back to uh, the terminal. So the first thing I will do is to uh, uh, um, touch the YAML uh, um, definition of a download from GitHub uh, YAML 
Uh, so I can have a look at it. It contains a lot of services, a lot of uh, pod. And you can see here, it doesn't have any um, network policies. So uh, then I win, so I will start uh, the max. And let me prepare something. And what I will do is I will uh, start uh, Inspector Gadget Network Policy Monitor to uh, see all the connections while I deploy this application. So it should catch uh, which pod is talking to which pod and so on. Uh, so up here, uh, ask uh, the Network Policy Advisor to monitor everything that happens in the namespace demo and record every TCP connection and so on in this file. Um, so, so far, nothing happened because uh, there is nothing in the namespace demo. So, this, so I will start by creating it. Once namespace uh, demo exists, I will deploy all my services. And then I will check what uh, is available there. So um, it'll take a bit of time. So I will go back to my slides while uh, um, it is deploying on uh, when it finishes this demo. So meanwhile, while this application is deploying, I can explain um, ETF in a nutshell, how things work. Uh, I will not go into deep details, but give an overview of what BPF is. Uh, so BPF is kind of a mini virtual machine in your uh, Linux kernel. And the workflow, how it works, is a BPF program in C. And then you compile this C program in, uh, with C long LLVM into this BPF bytecode. And once you have this BPF bytecode, you can upload that into the kernel with a specially designed system call called BPF. And the Linux kernel uh, is uh, first task is to check that uh, this BPF program uh, doesn't do anything wrong. So it's not allowed to, um, it will not damage uh, the kernel, it will not crash it because it verified that there is no loop, that it will not do random uh, memory access and so on. If you verify that uh, it's a good BPF program, then this BPF program can uh, be allowed to run and it will be executed uh, based on specific triggers. So it could be a network trigger every time a packet comes on the network interface, or it could be attached to uh, system calls. So every time a system call is executed, um, it will run the BPF program. Uh, and then it will uh, be able to send messages to applications in the user space via BPF maps. Uh, with this mechanism, we have a way which is um, safe for the Linux kernel to execute uh, arbitrary BPF programs in the Linux kernel and uh, inspect what's happening there. So, Inspector Gadget uses that a lot. And I will show the next slide how he does that. Um, so Inspector Gadget is a command line tool that you run on your laptop, uh, and then it communicates with the Kubernetes cluster only, only via um, the API server of the Kubernetes cluster. It doesn't SSH to your node, or it doesn't um, open a port or something like that. It's actually just a plugin to uh, kubectl, or then um, use a first class uh, object in Kubernetes like pods, daemon set, or um, configurations to uh, deploy the gadget pod on all nodes. Uh, and then this gadget pod will execute the PPF program, either trace loop or BCC or this network uh, policy advisor. Uh, this program will install the BPF program in the kernel as I showed in a previous slide, and then uh, gather events there that can be reported back to the user. So, I will go back to my demo and hope that uh, it's running now. Perfect. It's running. So uh, 
that's good. I will uh, now uh, try to see. So I have created all the network events in this uh, network uh, log file. And I can add a look at it to see how it looks like. It's actually one line uh, per a new uh, TCP connection with some metadata attached to see which pod is talking to which other pod. And based on that, there is a command to be able to make sense of that. Uh, so it um, looks like that. It uh, take as an input the network file, uh, sorry, the log file that I created before, and redirect that to uh, uh, a ML file that contains network. It should contain useful things. Um, we make it a bit bigger. Uh, so, uh, for example, here I have a network policy uh, that applies on the shipping service prop. Uh, because it has a pod selector on the shipping service, and it has both ingress and egress uh, policy network policies. And then here I see it's a lot to um, have ingress traffic coming from this uh, checkout service to, um, to the shipping service. And there are a lot of other network policies that is uh, find out based on uh, the real traffic that happened on the cluster. Um, of course, that's not something that the developer should apply blindly and uh, say, okay, now I have my network policies. But that's, uh, I find it a lot faster to uh, take an example on that, copy what makes sense, uh, than uh, just um, typing a YAML uh, network policy from scratch. Okay, that's, that's the end of this demo about the network policies. I will go back to uh, so the next gadget I will present is called Trace Loop. And Trace Loop, uh, if I go into technical details, what it does, it traces system calls uh, a bit like stress, but in C groups using BPF on overwritable ring buffers. So that's maybe a bit complicated to say but I will explain the use case of that. Um, as a developer, I really like to use Trace uh, as, uh, to uh, debug my application because I can see what system calls it does, but uh, Stress can be a bit difficult to use on Kubernetes. Uh, first, it is uh, a bit slow, so it's not possible to use Stress for all the processes, all the pods on my Kubernetes cluster in production. That will just not work. And then it's not... Um, uh, my use case is sometimes there is a pod that crashed, but once it has crashed, I want to debug it, but it's too late to attach stress on it because the process is no longer there and it's not possible. Uh, so I want a tool that is uh, useful for pods that crash, but sometimes it's unreprodu unreproducible and it's just one crash. Uh, so I cannot go back in the past and use the stress. And the idea of Trust Loop is uh, the idea of a flight recorder that always record all the system calls in a memory, in a ring buffer um, of limited size. And then if something crashed, uh, I have the last few system calls that are still in the ring buffer that can, I can inspect to see what was wrong there. Um, so it, it uses uh, one ring buffer for every pod and, or container. And then uh, if the pod crash, I can uh, inspect that ring buffer for this one. Um, so if I compare stress on stress loop, it's uh, a bit different. Uh, stress uses uh, ptrace mechanism uh, mechanism to get the trace. Stress loop uses BPF on trace points. The granularity is different as well. Stress uses uh, one process or several process. It can trace one or several processes. And stress loop uh, is a, is looking at C groups, so you can attach it to a C group or uh, yeah. Trace is uh, slow uh, because of the way it works, uh, but Trace Loop is uh, fast. But on the other hand, it, uh, it can lose uh, events if things are, um, uh, well, first, because the ring buffer is of limited size in memory. So when it's full, it's overwrite the 
all those levels. But although because uh, because of the way it works, it's possible that you can lose some uh, buffer sometimes. Uh, stress on the other hand is reliable and never lose anything. But even if stress loop is not as reliable, it's still very useful to debug the applications in practice. Uh, the way trace loop works, it um, it uses a BPF program attached to the trace point uh, called sysenter, and that was trace point that is executed every time there is a new system call executed on the Linux system. And the first thing that the BPF program will do is to uh, find out which container it is, so it can uh, look at the C group or uh, or in different way to uh, figure out okay that's this pod or this other pod and then redirect the execution flow to another BPF program that will uh, log the events in a per pod ring buffer. Those ring buffer are never uh, looked at, they are just a buffer in memory, uh, unless the user specifically asks for that uh, with the inspector gadget uh, command line tool to uh, dump the content of the ring buffer into the terminal. Um, in this way, it's uh, it's a faster than stress because nobody looks at a swing buffer when uh, everything is good, but only when there is a problem, um, this ring buffer are copied into user space to look at that. Uh, so there is no context switch like uh, stress uh, and this makes it faster. Uh, now it's time for a demo of uh, trace loop. So now I will uh, first have a look at the pods I have on my uh, cluster. So I don't have anything in the default namespace. I have a lot of pods elsewhere. Um, I will have a look with proxy gadget pets loop, what I can do with that. There is a few subcommands. Uh, the first one is a list, a list of what is uh, available. As I mentioned before, I don't have any pod running in the default namespace, so uh, I will look at other namespace, and I can see I have other things running here. And I will take an example of uh, this Kubernetes namespace. I'll see I have a few uh, traces that are available for me to see. Um, uh, I will look at one of them. Sorry, got uh, a problem. I will start again. Okay, the command is to uh, get. I picked one of them with this command, and I should be able to see the last system calls by the pod. Uh, event two is currently running. Um, I see the system calls were mostly um, sleeping uh, and not knowing much. Uh, the second um, demo I will do with that. Uh, let me hit the screen. I will uh, start a new pod, uh, but this one, multiplication, and then uh, trying to save uh, this to a file and then printing this file. But uh, if you notice my uh, shell script is not really good because um, I might not get the correct result. So it takes a bit of time to load the pod. And then uh, because my scripting, shell scripting skills are not so good, I don't get actually the result of the multiplication. And um, even if uh, the pod, uh, or if I delete the pod, uh, I can wonder is the result of my multiplication lost forever or can I recover it for in some way? Uh, yeah, with the inspector gadget, on the trace loop uh, gadget. I am able to uh, recover. 
Uh, so here I noticed uh, there is one uh, trace that has terminated a few seconds ago, and I should be able to oh. the wrong thing. Um, full screen again. So here I should be able to recover uh, the trace by picking the trace ID. You see the last uh, few system calls that uh, with the BC program and so on. Uh, if I read that, I can see that the BC uh, program received the multiplication and then write the output. So I can debug what was happening, what was happening on uh, and so on. Even through the port was deleted at that time. So trust loop will keep in memory for a few hours the last uh, uh, ring buffer of the port that have uh, crashed. Um, and so I, this gives me a bit of time to look and inspect things. Uh, thanks. That's the end of this demo about Trellis Loop. I will go back to my slides now. Okay. Um, so I have more uh, gadget uh, uh, to demo that are uh, feel face specific um, use case. So there is open snoop, exec snoop, and snoop profile and TCP tracer. Okay. So let, let me go back to uh, MX. Today, my internet connection is very slow. Don't worry too much about the internet connection. Um, it, it's lovely to see all these gadgets, and, and I'm curious um, when we get to the Q&A about what other people are looking for in additional gadgets. The bind snoop is, is relatively new, I think, isn't it? Uh, yes, yeah, some of them are uh, relatively new, like the profile gadget was a Tito. A couple of weeks ago, I think. Um, thanks. So I will uh, present, I will start first uh, this exact snoop gadget. What it does, it's uh, I specify on the command line which pod I want to monitor. So I can uh, use namespace or Kubernetes label or the pod name and so on. And then uh, everything that new process that we executed in the pod, in the pods that match uh, this criteria. Uh, I will have a new line to describe them. And in the other terminal, I will use the open scoop gadget uh, to get uh, information for each uh, new uh, file that is opened. Uh, don't worry too much about the error here uh, that will work. Oh, I click on, I move things around, but okay. Uh, that will work even through that. Uh, there is some warning about uh, BPF sure that is not in this kernel. Now I will start uh, a pod. Um, so here I use this uh, kind of anti-pattern to use a curl pipe bash for the purpose of the demo. Uh, I execute a script which I don't really know what it is uh, beforehand. Uh, so here inspector gadget will be useful to uh, be able to inspect what programs are executed and what uh, files are open uh, by executing a pod that I don't really have control on uh, what is executing. Uh, here it takes a bit of time because it needs to download the pod on this um, catacoda container. Ah, here I see, um, at the top, I see um, all the files that are being opened. And at the bottom, I can see uh, the commands for every new command, like sed, mkd, curl, pm, I see a new line, and at the top I see the files that are being opened. Uh, so all of that was done by uh, attaching BPF programs and getting the results through uh, inspected gadget. Um, here I specified one um, criteria to select which pod I want to inspect, but it's possible to uh, 
catch several pods at the same time, uh, in several pods at these levels and so on. So I can just sorry. on the full screen button again. Uh, I'm not used to uh, in the web console. If I remove this, for example, it will match all the parts in the default namespace. Okay, so next um, demo uh, about Ben Snoop, I will show that uh, it can actually match uh, several parts at the same time. So first thing, I will uh, use this band snoop uh, and I will select uh, all the pods that run in a different namespace on a different level. And then uh, I want to see uh, what kind of pets um, are being created and uh, on which pod they are bound to. But, Here, in fact, there is no pod currently running. And in the bottom terminal, I will start by creating this new namespace and then launch uh, this um, Nginx uh, deployment. Here, I see I select three replicas. So at some point, I should be able to see uh, three uh, containers here. And when they start, uh, I should be able to see uh, which uh, options on which PCP port they uh, use. Um, and I see that as useful for uh, when I deploy a new um, Nginx container. In this case, uh, I don't know this image very well, and I don't know it's not, so, not always as, um, easy to know whether it will listen on port 80 or 8080 or, or some other ports. And so when I write manually my Kubernetes services uh, in the YAML, I need to know uh, which part it's listening on to be able to write it. Uh, here it happened. So here I see uh, all the uh, bind system call with the options. So here I see it's uh, listened on part 8081 with a uh, reuse uh, socket option. That's part of the demo of um, uh, Vinestop. Um, the next demo is uh, about capabilities. So let me uh, clean that again. And here I will start by uh, creating uh, a new channel. So I use this, uh, the BusyBox command to uh, to get a shell in my terminal, and I will uh, execute some commands that are, uh, require some privilege. Uh, for example, create new network interface, uh, ch root, mknode, uh, ping, or listen and privilege port. Things that uh, sometimes work, sometimes doesn't work. Uh, and just to show you. Uh, Sometimes, okay, ping worked, uh, and C worked as well, but mknot doesn't work. Uh, here is an example, mknot doesn't work, but it's kind of difficult to know why. I just get operation updated, but I don't know which kind of capability we are missing in my pod to make it work. So if I don't know, if I receive a, um, I have to deploy a container image, which uh, does some operation which I don't really know about, I want to know what kind of capability I exercise, then I can use the capability uh, gadget for that. And for example, I will uh, first uh, catch all the parts that are in a different namespace and uh, see uh, if they do something here. Um, so if I repeat the mknot command, here I see uh, it requires the cap and cannot capability. I use a uh, ping. I need to have cap network. If I use 
I try to create a new network interface. Uh, I just get a question. Let us see that the cap net admin was exercised by the container attempted to exercise that capability. Um, so the, the goal of that is to be able to write uh, pod security policies uh, in a more informed way than just uh, allowing all the privilege just because it's easier. So I can uh, specifically add the capabilities that I really need or not everything. Um, thank that was for the capabilities um, gadget. The next gadget I will demo is a, a CPU profiler. So to demo a uh, CPU profiler, I will uh, first um, start the CPU profiler with this profile uh, gadget, and I will match everything that happens on the default namespace. And I specify this option dash k is to because I want to uh, see uh, the kernel stack of uh, everything that happened in those pods. Uh, so this gadget doesn't display anything until I stop it. So uh, here I think I am in the pod, right? Yes. Uh, if I run this command, uh, so it doesn't print anything, but it's, it should take a lot of uh, CPU. Look at that. Um, okay, I have this uh, cat process that takes some CPU. But uh, if I want to uh, see what it's actually doing in kernel, uh, I use the CPU profiler, I stop it, and I should get some stats about the most frequent kernel stack that uh, uh, were sampled uh, when I was, uh, when the CPU were in the spot. So the most frequent is at the bottom. I see the user space process is cut. And here the kernel stack uh, that, uh, uh, took the most of the time. And I see uh, there is a system call uh, that was a sys read, and then it go to VFS read in the kernel, and then there is a function in the kernel called urandom read, and so on. Um, so by using that, I can specify the pods that are slow, and then um, uh, figure out uh, kind of why is it slow, what is it, what it is really doing. Uh, there is this option uh, dash k for uh, getting kernel uh, stacks, but there is also uh, option dash u to get the uh, uh, stacks from user space. Uh, that uh, doesn't always work. That's uh, something that is a bit in development. Uh, by the way, all those tools come from BCC, so uh, it's not something that has been uh, reinvented in Inspector um, like Gadget. Inspector Gadget mostly reuse existing uh, tools in this case from BCC, and just adapt them to be able to use them uh, in Kubernetes. Um, and this CPU profiler was um, one tool uh, that I used recently with a customer to be able to inspect why something was slow uh, in the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, if you are interested, you can read about it in the last, uh, uh, in a recent uh, Kinfog blog post. Okay. And um, that's the last one I will demo today. It's called TCP Tracer. Stop this first. Um, first, I will start the TCP Tracer uh, gadget. That's the thing that's happening in this uh, default main space. And then I will uh, execute some command like wget. Let's see what happened here. So uh, it catched all the TCP connects, TCP accept, and TCP close, uh, all the events uh, for TCP connections. Uh, if I were to uh, create an incoming connection, I will see it as well here, and I can run things several times. Sometimes with some bugs here, this displaying two lines instead of one, but you get the ideas. Uh, I can see what's happening uh, in different pods. Um, that's for the fun. If I, if 
try to look at the different uh, in space. Sorry, I click on the wrong button again. Okay, I'm full screen again. Shift. Oh. Here I will be lucky and there will be, I will see some new TCP connection. Or maybe not. Okay, but you can inspect what your um, um, different ports are doing uh, about new incoming or outgoing TCP connection that way. Cool, so I will go back to my slides and explain a bit how things work. Uh, so in a lot of this demo, it was mostly tools from BCC that were adapted for Inspector Gadget uh, to run in uh, Kubernetes. Uh, what do we actually need to have a DPF tracing tool uh, adapted to Kubernetes? Uh, what I like to have is to, to trace uh, ports. So users don't always care about process ID. Uh, it's more useful to me to uh, select uh, which pod with uh, Kubernetes labels or Kubernetes namespace rather than uh, selecting the PID of uh, what you want to trace. Uh, when you have a lot of machines, that's uh, lots more practical that way. And I uh, want to have a kubectl-like -like user experience. So don't ask uh, uh, de developers to SSH through the uh, worker nodes to be able to debug, but um, use it from the comfort of the Kubernetes command line. Um, and another component uh, that is used in uh, Inspector Gadget is called the Gadget Tracer Manager. And as to explain it, I will show this command. Um, here in the exec snoop uh, gadget or other gadgets, I can select the pods I want by labels or by namespace or by pod name or by node or by uh, if it is a pod with several containers inside I can get the container index and I can use one or several of those uh, criteria to select the pods I want. So that make it a bit complicated because um, uh, in the BPF program in kernel uh, we don't know about uh, Kubernetes labels or Kubernetes namespace. So we need to match uh, this filtering criteria on what's happening in a PDF program. Uh, and another difficulty is that uh, pods can come and go and tracer can come and go as well. Um, pods can crash and then the replication controller can uh, start a new one and so on. So during the execution of a gadget, uh, pods can go, come and go. Um, although pods don't always have uh, predictable names, like in this example, there is a, a suffix, a random suffix. And, uh, and sometimes one pod can be traced by several uh, gadgets at the same time, uh, depending on the field. So to come up with a solution, there is this uh, gadget tracer manager, which is a demand running on the, in a demand set, so on, on the nodes, and they implement a gRPC API. A very simple one where the, this demand can be in form of new tracers on new containers. So there is kind of four methods on this gRPC API. Uh, on the left side, it can be in form of new containers using OCI hooks. So there is a uh, OCI prestart hooks. Every time a new container is created, um, the OCI hooks uh, and a gRPC call to the tracer manager to inform it. And on the right side, every time I start a new um, gadget with kubectl gadget or OC gadget, it will uh, use the Manitis API to execute something on the node. Uh, this uh, wrapper script will actually call uh, the gRPC method to add a tracer there. In this way, this uh, tracer manager knows about all the tracers, what they want to do on all the containers, uh, what label do they have, and what Kubernetes namespace uh, are they running on. With that information, it will update the BPF maps. Uh, so there is one BPF maps for each tracer, and uh, each map will uh, contain the list of containers that uh, it should trace. Uh, so when 
containers come and go, these maps will be updated. Um, and then these BPF maps uh, will be used by the BPF program. So in this case, I execute the exec snoop gadget. It executes a BPF program with a kprob on, on some system call. And then in the uh, BPF code, it will actually check the BPF map. It will look up if uh, the current uh, process or current group or current base is uh, something that should be traced or not, depending on the, uh, the configuration that has uh, been set up by the Gadget Tracer Manager. And then if it should not be traced, it just returns uh, without tracing anything. So that's how it works to select the parts. In this way, the BPF program don't need to do any string comparison uh, with the Kubernetes labels and so on, which will be, which is something which is difficult to do in BPF. It just has to uh, look in the uh, hash map if the container should be traced or not, and that's uh, fairly quick to do. Um, if you want, I can uh, show on the command line uh, a bit how it works. Uh, uh, this Gadget Tracer Manager. Uh, that depends if we have time for this right now. We got, we've got a little bit of time. Um, I'm not seeing a whole lot of questions in the, the Q&A, so just keep going. Um, and so far you've hit everything that I was going to ask, um, and so go for another one. Okay, so I can uh, show it then. Okay, let me go back to the terminal. Uh, so, what I will uh, do is to get uh, uh, my gadget pod. So, uh, this command is to just get the name of the pod here. Um, and then I will uh, execute, I will get a shell in that pod. Let's see if it works. Uh, so here I am inside the, uh, the pod of uh, the gadget, of Inspector Gadget. And here um, I see the entry prints and uh, some scripts. And uh, there should be this um, gadget tracer manager command here. Uh, and uh, in this, uh, that's actually a command line interface. Uh, uh, the only thing it will do will uh, it will call uh, on gRPC uh, the API that defined on the command line. Uh, I can show you that it should be running. Here it has been called by the pod with a serve option, so it's a serve the gRPC interface. Fill it with a dump option. It will uh, actually dump the, the list of containers in those about and the list of tracers in those about. So uh, here I don't have any tracer running, but I see a list of containers with some information in those about, and it should have uh, uh, filled uh, BPF maps, which I should be able to see in this directory. Uh, I don't have any tracer running, so I don't see them, but that's uh, where I will be able to. And uh, the gRPC interface is actually not something exposed to outside, it's just uh, a Unix socket that is uh, listed here in a slash run slash gadget tracer manager dot socket. So it's a Unix socket like Docker or other use. Uh, which is not exposed to internet. Okay, that was just a glance view on the on this component. All right. Um, so if you want to contribute to Inspector Gadget, uh, you are welcome. It's an open source project, and it has a um, GitHub um, page with issues, and um, I, I try to uh, use this label, a good first issues, which is either an issue that is uh, easy, or uh, where I can provide guidance uh, about how to do that. 
uh, so both on Inspector Gadget on the Trace Loop uh, project, uh, yeah, they are both. Uh, so um, I try to make it uh, uh, work on many Kubernetes distributions. So that's a, I will say it's in the early stage of this uh, program. So the, there is no release that works on OpenShift yet, but uh, there is pull requests and the demo code that I show here, and I hope to have um, bodies which works on OpenShift uh, nicely, like I showed today. Well, that would be great. Do you, uh, have you been in um, contact with some of the OpenShift development team yet? Um, I have not, not yet. Uh, well, we will get you connected. I think that would be cool. that would be cool. Um, and. And I'd, I'd like to see this this working. It, it, it's 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 interesting to me because um, Kubernetes is a wonderful high level abstracted thing, and um, but to really make sure you debug it and you can really work with it at the granular level that you're showing it and making it easy to do so is pretty pretty awesome. So um, I I'm curious all of the gadgets that you've um, shown us today. For the most part, were they contributed as open source, or are they things that have come um, from from kinfolk engineering teams? Is what sort of community do you have around um, Inspector Gadget at the moment? Oh, I, I can go back to the list of uh, gadget and so where they come from. Um, so uh, most of them come from the project PCC, so uh, Open Snoop, Exec Snoop, Man Snoop. Uh, all the ones at the bottom, actually, uh, capabilities as well, but they come from uh, BCC. And the two ones at the top were uh, written uh, work, first loop on, uh, you, see, you have seen it's in a GitHub repository on the Kinfolk organization. And uh, Network Policy Advisor, uh, it, um, it relies on VPF code uh, that were written for um, with scope initially. Mm -hmm, that's right. Uh, so, Yes, uh, I can show you uh, on GitHub. Yeah. I can PCC uh, repository. There is actually a lot of gadgets or uh, tools uh, that are here. There is a list here, and that's really useful to uh, to learn about BPF here. Uh, so here I have a list. Um, Apple on um, a long list and. Um, I just pick a few of them, like uh, exec snoop on open snoop and so on, and uh, use them in Inspector Gadget. But there are probably others that you like and that can be adapted to Kubernetes as well uh, in Inspector Gadget. Yeah. So, is there so anywhere there's like a, a wish list of which ones you want people to work on first, or come to, or how are you prioritizing which ones you're adding to Inspector Gadget? I guess that's my teasing out the question for people who want to help um, or want to um, add one to your list of things to do? Um, I don't really know. I will say that depends on uh, what you want to do with it. Uh, so the recent one that has been added is Profile. And uh, I picked this one because it's, uh, it's the one I used in a customer situation to uh, find out what has, why was it slow running on this Kubernetes cluster. Uh, but um, yeah, if uh, there is a if there is a specific problem that needs to be debugged, and uh, there is uh, something that you need, your Kubernetes cluster is uh, low with an FS, and uh, maybe this one could be picked up. Yeah. That would be cool. So if if you're listening to this afterwards and you see something on this list that you think we all ought to be working on, um, you know, reach out to Albin and do that. The other thing, I did notice you are going to give a tutorial, I believe, at KubeCon, um, the virtual one. You've got, it's listed on the schedule. Is that still a go for you guys? Um, your tutorial on using BPF in cloud native environments, is that still a go on August? Uh, yes, I uh, still plan to do it. Uh, awesome. So, um, uh, and need to check with, uh, I'm not speaking alone, I'm speaking with Lorenzo uh, from uh, Sysdig. Uh, so he will talk about uh, kubectl Trace as well, which is a similar project uh, doing BPF things on Kubernetes. Um, 
I still plan to do it, and I need to check if uh, we can both. Uh, yeah, with this change um, of planning, um, that sometimes disrupt a bit plans, but I hope. Can you still hear me? I can hear you. Hi, everybody. Chris Short here. Um, I think we lost Diane, to be honest with you. She might have just dropped, like we just lost her video and everything. Uh, she just DM'd me, and she's back. She just lost power and is jumping back in. Cool. Oh, wow. I, I'm the one with the thunderstorms here today, Diane. Hey, I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> I had a bit of, bit of a power outage there for a half a second. So that's what's lovely about live live streaming things like this. So the other thing that I want to get you back on again sometime really soon. She gone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Albin, uh, I'm going to assume that, oh, no, and she's back. Diane, you I might want to just wrap it up <laughs> before I'm, you I'm lose power again. I'm, I'm trying. The network is just doing this wonky thing. I want to have Alvin back on with some of the other team um, sometime soon to talk about flat car, um, especially um, flat car in the context of OKD, um, which is in its beta release and going GA, and as you probably have noted, is running on Fedora Core OS. I'm very curious to see what we can do with flat car and OKD. So um, stay tuned for me picking his brain and his team's brain about that in the not too distant future. So, Alvin, um, thank you for putting up with my um, lovely internet access today. Um, I do have fiber optic. I don't know why this is going up and down. But anyways, um, thanks for joining us today. Um, if you're listening, I will put the slides for this and the video of his demos and all the links on um, our YouTube channel at RH OpenShift and as well on a blog post on OpenShift.com. So don't scramble and try and write notes. I'll make Alvin give me his slides and links to all the resources. So thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Alvin, for taking the time to do this. I'm looking forward to the tutorial at KubeCon and um, seeing how KubeCon goes virtual. And hopefully they don't have fiber optic that's as wonky as mine today. So thanks again. Take care. Thank you, Arnold. All right. And thanks for everybody who's been watching. Great to see you. <laughs>